At CanDo, we believe strongly in safety, and at the heart of the belief is being switch smart. When you communicate and confirm, clearly and consistently, while on the job, you will greatly decrease the risk of injury or accident to yourself, your colleagues, and the public. In this video, we will be exploring a variety of situations where it is important to communicate and confirm clearly and consistently. It's important to always communicate the position of a derail. Nobody wants to run over a derail. They're there to prevent unintended movements from getting away or protecting people's safety. Twelve twelve North Spur derail is down and in the non-derailing position. Over. Spur derail is down and in the non-derailing position. Over. There's a lot of things within about 100 feet of a switch that can go wrong. So just take a step back and take a really close look at what's going on around the switch. And so if you do line the switch, you need to communicate that, you know what, we're lined up into track four, the points are tied against the stock rail, the target looks good, we're okay to come back. 10-10, lined up to the lead, points are good. Have you back up 10 cars to clear the switch. If you find yourself approaching a red flag or a blue flag and you're not sure what's going on with the situation, you make sure that you stop short of the blue flag or the red flag and try to get a hold of someone if you need access to that area to see if they can drop those flags. I need to make sure that I'm letting my crew know that hey, there's blue flags up on this track and I want them to come back to me and let me know that they actually got that. 12, 12, uh, two cars to stop. Two cars to stop, 12, 12. Blue flags up, uh, we have to wait for them to take the blue flag down. 12, 12, blue flag still up, standing by. Make sure that you're never taking down a flag by yourself. Make sure that it's an authorized person doing so. Uh, 12, 12, blue flag is removed. Uh, we're lined for shop track three. Okay, ahead, two cars to adjoin. 12, 12, blue flag is down, clear the rail. Coming ahead, two cars to adjoin. Shop track number three. So when we're in training and detraining, we want to make sure that we are getting on and off of stationary equipment first and foremost, and when the equipment is stationary, we can get on and off uh, using three points of contact in a safe manner. We really need to work on communication for end training and detraining, letting our crew know if we're on board. 12-12, uh, I'm off and clear. Come on ahead, one car to the joint. 12-12, you're off and in the clear. Coming ahead, one car, one to the joint. Never ride into a restricted clearance, even if it looks like you'll get by. Just never risk it, there's no rush, there's never a need to ride into it. And some places there aren't restricted clearance signs, so always take the initiative and look ahead. So if you see something that's close to the right of way, you need to communicate that to whoever, if it's the engineer or another crew member, say, hey, there's something in the way, and so that way you guys are proactive and you're actually stopping. It's probably one of the most important things we need to do in our job is protect the point. If our eyes aren't there, no one's are. That's as real as it gets. If we're, we're driving blind, basically, anyone and their grandmother could literally walk out in front of us and get run over. Areas aside, private property aside, it could still happen. Nothing is set in stone. 
shoving blind is just, it's a risk I'm not willing to ever take. And by talking to one another and actually really having a good solid job briefing and thinking, yeah, no, we got all the bases covered here. We're gonna prevent things from going bump in the night. 10 10, we're lined into track three, bringing ahead five cars for a stop at the crossing. I'm on. 10 10, lined for track three, come ahead, 10, five cars to a stop. So the groundsman will ask for three point protection. He will get confirmation from the operator that three point protection is applied. 10 10, get a three point. That's my lifeline to my operator that he knows I'm in there and I have to have that confirmation from him. And 1010, you have three point protection supplied. We're applying efficient uh, handbrakes, uh, retarders, anything that secures the rail cars in place and it should be communicated with all team members that they are secured properly with how many brakes. Efficiency test done on the secured equipment so that everybody knows that that equipment will not move. Got two brakes on two cars. I'll get you to bump into them and see if they hold. 10 10, cancel three points. If we are leaving a track unattended, that we are securing the equipment, that we're testing the equipment, that it really actually is secure and that the crew is communicating and saying, yes, track eight is secure with eight handbrakes. And then everybody knows. Communication is key when it comes to securing equipment because it's so easy just to walk away from stuff and think, Joe will get the brakes. No, Joe's got other things on his mind. So we need to make sure that everyone's doing their part in communicating, especially when it comes to securing rail cars. Remember to always be switch smart and to communicate and confirm, clearly and consistently. Manage one task at a time. Don't work ahead. Yeah, 10, 10, switch is line. Assess the changes in conditions and routine. Concentrate and focus on the current job. Visually confirm and communicate. Don't assume. Keeping our head in the game and looking around and keeping our situational awareness because the rule book doesn't cover every single thing we're possibly going to run into. If that's not going to be covered in the rule book, then at least if we're communicating with each other, we're keeping our heads in the game and we're looking for the things that might actually hurt us. And by communicating these things, we're protecting everybody. <laughs>